Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good evening, friends and family. It's good to be here again, teaching the word of the Lord to you. Happy new month to every single person. This month, you're breaking through, you're breaking forth in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the month of March, the month of moving forward in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And I believe strongly that the aftermath blessing and effect of 21 days fasting shall be yours in the precious name of Jesus. And your heavens shall be open perpetually throughout the rest of this year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As our custom is, we are starting a new series of teaching and we are looking at the wonderful names of the Lord. This reveals his personality, his character, his being to us. Each and every one of us must get fully acquainted with the God we intend to walk with this year in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, the names of God reveals to us the potential of God. How strong and powerful God is. The Bible says in the books of Proverbs 18 verse 10, it says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. In other words, we are qualified to be called the righteousness of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And therefore, we have the name to run into. The name protects us, it defends us, it shields us, it provides for us. And it reveals to us that we can be rest assured with a level of confidence that is beyond normal that God will come true. Now, perhaps the most common one that we've come across is the one of Jehovah Jireh or Jehovah Jireh, depending on what part of the world you're from. And this is revealed to Abraham, the patriarch of faith, when he was sent to sacrifice his only son, his only begotten son, Genesis 22, verse 1 to 14. And I believe that in our study of the scriptures this evening, it shall be of great uh, revelation unto us and great inspiration unto us and giving us the confidence and the assurance that we are not walking alone in this year 2016 that God is with us and he will supply all our needs according to his riches uh, through Christ Jesus in Christ Jesus in the precious name of Jesus Christ now shall we pray father in the name of Jesus we give you glory and honor we bless your holy name and we thank you so much for your love for your guidance and protection and thank you for bringing us safely into the month of March. Thank you for your provision in stock for us. We know, God, that you are going to supply all our needs according to your riches. Now, Father, we give you glory in anticipation. Now, this evening, Lord, as we sit at your feet to learn your word, please open our eyes of understanding and reveal to us the mystery of your name to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I'm so excited when I, whenever I get to speak about God's word. It gives me so much joy and delight. No doubt I'm fulfilling my potential by doing what God has asked me to do. Now, tonight we're looking at the names of God. I believe that is so important in our walk with God and our understanding of who God is. The names of God are internal. The names of God are all-powerful, almighty, self-existing because it reveals the a character and the personality of God to us. Many of us worship a God that we don't know. That's why we find it very difficult to obey his instructions whenever they come to us, whether by uh, revelation, whether by insight um, from the pastors or by a prophet. Um, many of us find it difficult to obey him because we don't really know him. And I think I've said it time without number that most of the blessings that we really covet is actually hinging on the obedience or our obedience to his instructions and his word. Now, we have read about Abraham several times. We've heard about him. We know him as the patriarch of faith. But Abraham encountered God as the God that will provide. You see... Many of us, at least, are well-to-do in comparison to some parts of the world. Now, if I said to you, um, do you have £10 for those who live in England or $10 if you live in, Amer in America? For somebody that has a regular day job, $10 or £10 would not be a lot of money. But when you get to a situation where your money becomes worthless, when you, when you get to a situation when your money has no value. For example, we know Abraham is blessed. We've read his, the scriptures and we understand that he has all things that he needs. Male servant, female servant. As a matter of fact, his wife gave the, uh, the man of the house, Abraham, the servant, to bear him children. So we can say to, we can talk about Abraham as being well off. 
But by the time you get to the by, um, to Genesis 22 and you read about Abraham's encounter with God, after God has blessed him with a child, he his money was useless to save him. Now, what God asked of him was not something he could buy with money because it was something only God could give him. Give me your only son, whom you have waited for 25 years to even see. Now, that is a request that his money was useless to fight against or his wealth or his connection. Now, many of us have not seen God as Jehovah Jari or Jehovah Jiri because we have not gotten into those situations or simply we are still trying to fight a spiritual battle or we're trying to fight or uh, run the race of life in the energy of our flesh. And this has constantly led us or uh, brought us flat on our faces. Now, we must understand that God is a God that means what he says and will say what he means exactly. And there's nothing that is too difficult for him. And that's why it's important that we, re we um, make up our minds to follow him regardless of his consequences. Because he will justify our obedience and vindicate his command. Jehovah Jari. When God revealed that name to Abraham or revealed that aspect of his personality to Abraham, it was a contradiction in a situation where God seemed to have contradicted himself. And allow me to explain. Now, in the books of Genesis 22, when God asked Abraham to go out to sacrifice his son, it was asking him to do things that he himself has told us not to do. For example, in the books of Exodus chapter 20, he said, Thou shalt not kill. So we know murdering or killing people or, or committing the crime of killing or murdering somebody is something that God frowns against. But yet again, God was asking him to kill his son. Number two, Abraham was told that his son would be an heir to his um, lineage. He was not going to have heir as Agar's child, which is Ishmael. That was not going to be his lineage. It was actually going to be Isaac, the promised child, which is a type of Christ. Anyway, we'll get into that in a minute. So how can you tell me I'm going to have an heir if you're telling me to kill him? Because number one, Isaac was a little boy. He was a teenager. Uh, give or take, he was between 15 and 17. And then... He is yet to have a child. He's yet to even get married because we read later on that Isaac does not get married until he was 40. So how could you be telling me that he's going to be an heir if you're telling me to kill him? Now, that looks like a big contradiction. But yet, when it comes to obeying God in some instructions of life, we have to put outside our logic and our um, logical thinking because we cannot reason God out. And one of the reasons I believe Abraham is called the friend of God is because he was also willing to sacrifice his own son. Remember Genesis, uh, John chapter 3 verse 16. He said, For God so loved his world that he gave his only begotten son. That's because somebody has sown the seed way back in Genesis 22 and was willing to give his own son up because he wants to see the promise fulfilled. Now I believe that you and I can also be friends of God if we are willing to do the works of Abraham. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He said to them, he said, you claim to be Abraham's children, but are you willing to do the works of Abraham? Because Abraham is not crucifying me, he was trying to kill me. He said, nobody's trying to kill you. But understand this, our obedience will be justified and his command vindicated by God. I mean, we've read the red end of the story and we know what happened. But perhaps I take you through every step. So really, I like the point to you. Now, number one is that God is concerned about our needs. God himself is concerned about our needs. Uh, you know the famous scripture from the books of Philippians 4 verse 19. It says, my God will supply all your needs, all your needs, according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now, every one of us have needs. Now, everybody needs, uh, everybody's um, needs are different. Some people, they require a child, the fruit of the womb. Some people, they, they need money. Some people, they need shelter. Some people, they need a new heart, a new kidney. 
Some people just want a, 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 a good health. They want good health. So everybody's needs is, is, um, is different from one person to the other. But he says, I will supply all your needs. One of the scriptures or some of the scriptures that have given me the assurance that God is more willing to answer my prayer than I'm eager to ask of him is the books of Matthew chapter 7. And we know the famous scripture, verse 7. It said, Ask, you shall receive, seek, you shall find, knock, it shall be opened unto you. If you move to verse 9 of the same scripture, Matthew chapter 7, you discover the Bible says that if a son asks his father for stone, sorry, for bread, would he give him a stone? If he asks him for fish, would he give him a serpent? In other words, God, who is infinite in wisdom, would not give us what we don't need, number one. He would always supply our need, number two, because Jesus said that our Father, who art in heaven, a man does not, that does not look after his own home is worse than an infidel and he himself denies the faith. That's what the scripture says. And if God then be our father, then you can be rest assured that he will provide your need because it's the duty of the, of the father to provide for his children. And I think that should give us the understanding that God is concerned about our needs. Number two, I want you to understand that God is not only concerned about our needs, he doesn't think any need is too small. Jesus compared a common sparrow with us and he tells us that we are more valuable than the sparrows. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in the books of Matthew chapter 10 verse 30 that the hair on our heads are numbered. In other words, he has taken the time out to make sure the hair strands individually have a number. That's how much detail that God has paid unto us. Number three is that no request can be too big because God's source of supply is inexhaustible. I mean, the best of the best of us, the most developed countries of the world can tell you they have stored food for the next 10 years, for the next 20 years, in case of a drought, in case of famine, in case of any um, a natural disaster. But yet, God's supply is inexhaustible. Have you ever imagined how God is able to take care of the entire world? There's enough food to go around, except some countries are harboring more than they need to, they need to but believe me, there's enough food in the world, enough meat in the world to take care of the entire population of the world. Even when they tell us we this population expand, um, um, growth or boom, so to say. Yet there's enough food in the world to take care of the entire world. God has never run out. He has never run out. Remember the children of Israel when they were passing through the wilderness. It was the same God that brought manna. It was the same God that brought quail onto their onto their camp. So God can never be exhausted. And I want us to understand this because that gives us an assurance of who God is. But I also want us to remember that God will supply our need, not our greed. God will supply our need, not our greed. Take delight in the Lord and I will give you desires of your heart. Psalm 37 verse 4. Know that God will supply our needs, not our greed. Now, many of us might be praying for seven houses, seven cars, seven yachts, seven private jets. Is that a need or is that greed? Sometimes we complain about God not answering our prayers. Perhaps what we are asking is not actually in line with his will. When we studied last month the subject of prayer, we discovered that God will answer our prayers, that we pray according to his will. 1 John chapter 5 verse 14. So you must understand that you and I are God's responsibility and he would not deny us. Because he said a man that does not look after his home denies the faith. A man that does not provide. And God is our father. So he must provide for us. Now, time with that number, I've tried to highlight certain things about God's character to us. Perhaps we'll look a little bit about worship. And I know our topic tonight is not worship. Worship is total submission to God. In all things, in all ways, God has the final say. 
Now, when Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son, that was not the most, uh, that's not the easiest thing in the world. Because number one, he has grown to love the boy whom he has waited for for 25 years. No, maybe before he was 20, 75, he had probably given up hope. But by the time he was 75 and God told him, you're going to have a son, he was waiting in anticipation for the glorious day when the boy would be delivered. He did not see the boy until he was 100. Now suddenly you are asking me to sacrifice the boy. Think about it for a moment. As a parent, as a father, as a spiritual father, as an uncle, as an aunt, how much affection you have for your loved ones. They look so cute when they're young. And you love them so much. But yet, he could not refuse when God came calling. And I love him for something. Because I'm, the Bible does not expressly say it. But I believe that Abraham did not dis discuss this with his wife, Sarah. Because believe me, if he had done that, she would have stopped him from obeying God. There are times that many of us need to disassociate ourselves from certain people. You know, I tell people about the scriptures in the books of Matthew that says that if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. And your left of uh, your eyes causes you to sin, cut, take, pluck it out. Because it's better for you to get into the kingdom of God with one hand and one eye than go into hell fire with both eyes and both arms. There are times that we have to cut certain people out so close to us as our hand or so dear to us as our eyes so that we can fulfill God's will. I've said that before, but I'll say it again, is that everybody will stand individually, as the scripture has said, and give account of their lives before the Almighty God. This race of life is individually based. It's not me, my wife, and my children. It's not me, my wife, and my family. It's not me, my wife, and anybody else. It's just you by yourself before God. Remember, in heaven, there's neither male nor female. We're all equal before God. But when it comes to worship, for it to be acceptable, it must be total and it must be unreserved. Many of us still struggle to pay offerings. That's why the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Because when you're cheerful, that means you're doing it unreservedly. But many of us still uh, struggle to pay tithes because we find it difficult to give 10%. But yet we are happy to pay 10% or more, more than that. Um, in the clubhouse, in the um, recreation center, and doing all kind of things, etc., etc. If 10% is too much, then you give God 90 and keep 10, if, if it's that bad. But you see, when it comes to that level of obedience to God, you must have faith in Him. That's why Abraham is called the father of faith. By the time you read the story carefully, you get to Genesis 22 verse 8. You discover that Abraham, even though he was asked, we, uh, we have the stick, we have the knife, we have all things ready for sacrifice, but we have no ram. He said, my God will provide. And also he said, even my son and the son is going, but we are both going to come back. He doesn't know how, he doesn't know how it's going to happen, but yet he knew they were going to come back. Number two is that, Worship will always cost you something. I love the word of David in the books of 2 Samuel 24, verse 24. He said, I will not give to God what does not cost me anything. You see, many of us, you begin to treat God as if he's a beggar, forgetting that he owns all things. Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell within it. So you must understand that when you are giving to God is a privilege because he owns all things in the first place. And therefore, when we give to him, we must give to him our very, very best. It must cost us something. For it to be true worship, it must cost us something. It must cost us something. What are you giving to God? Is this the remnant or after you have done all? Or you're giving the very, very best. Remember the story of um, Esau when he killed his brother. He was angry that God, um, not Esau, Cain's rather, when he killed his brother, 
when he killed his brother, he was angry that God did not accept his own sacrifice. But ask why. The reason was very simple. He brought the littlest or the lowest or the smallest that he had to God as a means of worship. God is not a beggar. Please be very careful. You're better off not giving him anything than giving him something that is not worth God. How much God is worth to you is shown in what you're willing to give to him. Now, let me begin to close. How or what prompts Abraham to be able to do this? Number one, he believed that God can do all things. He has the power to do anything. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in the books of Jeremiah 32 verse 27, it said, I'm the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Many of us have limited God or we have limited our supply to just our paycheck that comes at the end of the month. But God has more than one ways to bless you. He said, give, shall be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run it over. Shall men give unto your bosom. So he can use men to give unto you. Luke chapter 6 verse 37. God can use men to give unto you. He can use the government to give unto you. I've received checks from the um, tax of, uh, office before that I've overpaid. I wasn't expecting it, but yeah, I got it. He can move men, he can move kings of nations to bless you. I remember the story of a young man that was walking in a local fast food joint or fast food restaurant. And one day, an Arab man who felt very upset walked into the store because that was the first time visiting a country. I think it was England or America, one of those countries. On getting to the store and he began to look around trying to order food. He's been walking around all day. He's a very rich man. But he has been frustrated because he could not speak the language. And all of a sudden, he walked into the store looking around trying to order some um, a, a, fast, a fast food meal. And then he heard somebody speak his language to him. His fate lit, uh, lit up and he spoke to him and he replied back in the same language. He said, do you speak the language? He said, I speak it very well, fluently. He said, I will pay you $1 million to come with me right now. And then begin to interpret because I need to do some shopping. And I, this is my first time in the country and I don't know anywhere. So he went from being a fast food attendee to becoming a millionaire overnight. Now, God can use any man to supply your need. In the case of Elijah, he sent ravens to feed him in the wilderness. Now, I want you to understand that he is the God of all flesh, all mankind. And he can do whatever he pleases. Therefore, we must not be weak in faith. We talk about Abraham being our father. We must be willing to do works of Abraham. Go all the way with God. You see, the deeper you go with God, the more you will know of him. And the better you can relate with him. Number two, Abraham feared God. Abraham feared God. How many times have you heard God say something to you, but pretend that you didn't hear him? How many times have you heard God tell you to sow a particular seed? It might be your car. It might be your house. It might be the juries in your, in your, in your box. It could be something. Or it might be a landed property. But yet you pretend you didn't hear God. And you wonder why he's not blessing. There must be a cycle. There must be a cycle. Imagine... None of us had a means to actually relieve ourselves by going to the toilet. Imagine all we ever did was eat and eat and eat and eat. There was no other way to pass anything out. There was no waste access or waste uh, place to pass out. I think many of us will be bloated right now or we will actually be, um, I don't know what, what, what to use in that place. So what I'm saying is this. Abraham feared God. Knowing that he that has fulfilled the promise of 25 years, surely he has a plan. And I want us to understand that God has a plan for your life. This year is a year of fulfillment of potential and you and I will fulfill our potential in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number three is that God, he believed God to be eternal. 
because he knows what step to take part time. He sees all things. He knows all things. He's Alpha. He's Omega. And we can trust and be rest assured in his word and promises. I want to assure you that God will supply your need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. You and I are children of God. And therefore, God has an obligation towards us. As I begin to close, obedience will sometimes mean putting aside personal aspirations, family obligations, social expectations. Because these are the things that are barricades and barriers to us fulfilling God's will and purpose for our lives. Many of us now constantly um, think about what others will say before we actually obey God. Who is more hi um, uh, higher or who has greater priority in life? God or fellow man? If it's God, then we need to obey him with the whole of our heart. Don't seek other people's opinion before you obey God. Because that will only get you in trouble. And human beings, I, I love them for something. When they give you an advice and it works, they will love to claim the glory for it. When it goes the other way, they will simply put their hand up and say, well, I only advised you, I didn't tell you to do it. So I'd rather tell you to obey God. Because he said, I would never leave you, I would never forsake you. He is the God that supplies all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. And believe me, that source is inexhaustible. May God help you in Jesus' precious name. Now shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. We thank you so much for your love, for your guidance and protection. Thank you for bringing us safely into the month of March. Lord, we give you all the praise and adoration. My Father, my God, I just want to commit ourselves into your holy hands again. This month, O oh Lord, move us forward in every aspect of our lives. And I pray, my Lord and my God, that the heavens over us shall be open perpetually in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, reveal to us um, tangibly that you are our supplier. You are our defender. You are our protector. This month of March, in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, my Savior, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.